Hi, my name is Scott. I'm a practicing physician assistant working in endocrinology. I'm also a type 1 diabetic for a little over 30 years. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and do so. I'm going to be coming out with new videos all the time, different product reviews, tips, and tricks for fellow diabetics or people just learning more about the disease. What we're going to be learning about today, what I'm going to go over is three different tips or tricks, I guess you could say, um, that I have found to decrease your post meal spike. I'm not gonna go over the common sense stuff. Obviously we know we shouldn't be having that extra piece of birthday cake or uh, you know, you should be giving your insulin before the meal and not 30 minutes after. I'm not gonna focus on those things. I'm, I'm gonna focus on three different things anybody can implement that's really not gonna be a complicated thing that you can change in your day-to-day -day life to decrease your post meal spikes that can bring down that post meal blood sugar spike. So the first one that I wanna go over is something that I think is probably the easiest of all three. And all it is is to add fiber to the meal that you're having. Add some fiber to the meal you're already having or find a food that's similar to the one you're already eating with a higher fiber content. So what I'm talking about is, for instance, if you're going to have white rice, if you have brown rice that has more fiber, you're going to decrease your spike. So let's talk about fiber for a second so we can kind of understand why this happens. So when you have fiber, specifically I'm talking about soluble fiber. There's soluble and there's insoluble fiber. Insoluble fiber is basically the type that you take if you're constipated. It goes through the system real quick. We don't digest it, and then it can basically make you uh, less constipated. But the one we're talking about is something known as soluble fiber. Now, soluble fiber is found in beans, oats, flaxseed, oat bran. And when you ingest soluble fiber, even when you add it to an existing carbohydrate, say you're having a piece of bread and you add a form of soluble fiber, what happens is, is when you ingest the soluble fiber, it actually absorbs the water in the, the GI tract and it forms this gel-like substance. And what happens when it forms this gel-like substance is it slows down the digestion. You can think of it as basically like molasses. It basically gums everything up and it slows down digestion. Well, why does slowing down digestion decrease the spike of our blood sugar. So what happens is if you slow down digestion, the body, if you're a type 2 diabetic, you're still making insulin, the body has more time to adjust to the, the carbohydrates being digested, to the sugar spike, and it has more time to produce insulin to decrease that spike. In addition, say you're a type 1 diabetic and you took your insulin, what happens is when you slow down digestion, the insulin you gave has more time to work. So instead of your blood sugar going like this right after a meal, it, it's digested very quickly, you spike up like this, it's spikes more like this. Your blood sugars don't get that high. It's a slow little peak rather than a big, big old tall mountain like that. So that's all you have to do. You just add soluble fiber. Like I said, there's different sources. My favorite one is either uh, chia seeds or flax seeds, and then I add those to my existing meal. So that's one way you can do it. You can add it to something you're already eating. Um, if that doesn't work for you, there's different foods that have soluble fiber. Again, remember, soluble fiber is the one we're looking for, and you can swap out some of the existing foods you're having or just add it to whatever you're eating. Find a creative way to add some form of soluble fiber. So that's it. You really don't have to change what you're eating. So if you have maybe, say, like a smoothie, it had some bananas and milk and things like that, add in some chia seeds. If you're having oatmeal, add some flaxseed, add some chia seed, that soluble fiber is going to gel up and it's, it's going to swell and then it's going to slow down the digestion so your blood sugar doesn't spike like this after a meal. So that's the first and probably the easiest one that we're going to go over. So again, add fiber to your meal. That's really important. The second one that I want to talk about, this one's going to be probably common sense. I'm sure you've heard this before, but after a meal, get up, be active, exercise. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Anything that taxes the muscle, anything that makes the, the muscles move and contract and things like that is going to lower your blood sugar. So when you exercise, when you use your muscles, when you run, you swim, even when you go for a walk after a meal, what happens is there's actually two different things that are going to help you lower your blood sugar spike. So the first thing is that when you exercise, you tax the muscles, you actually absorb the existing glucose in your body, your muscles soak up all of that excess glucose to use for energy. The second thing is you actually, and this can this effect can last for up to a couple days, you increase your insulin sensitivity so your body's more sensitive to the existing insulin. So you may have to take less insulin. If you're a type 2 diabetic, your body's still making insulin. It's actually going to work better. Um, same for type 1s that are you know injecting insulin. That insulin's going to work better. You're probably going to need less. So what happens is when you even just go for a walk or you go for a run or you, you, you work out, you use your muscles rather than just sitting down after a meal, your muscles um, have a storage of glucose in them and they use that glucose 
to provide the muscles with energy. So your muscles always normally have a storage of glucose. When you go out, you start working out, you're contracting your muscles, you're walking, you're swimming, and your muscles start contracting, well, they use up that glucose store that's stored inside of them. And once that store of glucose is used up, they start desperately seeking for glucose in the bloodstream of the body. So what they do is the existing glucose that's in your blood, they start soaking that up. They need to store more glucose in the muscles. They need that for energy. So this is one of the only ways that um, your body actually takes up glucose into the cells that's independent of insulin. Normally, the only way we bring our blood sugar down is with insulin, but this is one of the few ways um, that your body actually brings down glucose, uses glucose independent of insulin. So when your muscles get taxed, you, you work out, you stress your muscles, they need more energy, they soak up all of that excess glucose, your blood sugars will drop pretty impressively. So that's one of the big things with exercise. The second thing is, is when they're repairing, they're actually more insulin sensitive. So you're going to need less insulin, you're going to find that your blood sugars will be lower for even a couple days after exercising. So that's a big one. You have a big meal. A lot of times I know myself, maybe I ate a little bit more than I would have liked to for dinner. I know right away I go out, I take a walk. It doesn't have to be anything crazy or strenuous. You don't have to go out and do CrossFit, but go out and just be active. Use your muscles, make them soak up some of that excess glucose. And that's a tip that I would say for other diabetics too, is um, sometimes when I find my blood sugar starting to go up a little bit, I see it's creeping up, maybe 160, 170. Instead of just reaching for the insulin, giving myself a couple units nice and easy, I go out, I walk. It's it's healthy for you any, anyways. I go out, maybe like a short jog, just something that I know I can bring down my blood sugar naturally. I don't have to give myself insulin and worry about maybe stacking insulin. I'm going to have, you know, maybe dinner later and I have to worry, well, how long ago did I give the last injection? It's just an easy, natural way to bring down your blood sugar. So that one's really important. And I know I'm sure we've all heard this before, exercise, 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 but understanding what happens and kind of the process makes it, a, you know, a little bit more impactful. So I definitely think that's really important and that's a really good one to lower your blood sugar after a meal. So go ahead and exercise, be active after your meals. That's really helpful. And the third one um, is something that we kind of talked about a little bit with the, the addition of fiber, the tip one, is um, eating lower glycemic index foods. This one's really important. So you have different types of foods and they all have GI scores. Um, the higher GI foods are going to be white bread, crackers, bagels, donuts, pastries, all of those types of things. Those are called simple sugars and those are going to have a high glycemic index, a high GI score. Now what it means with a high GI score, it basically means that when you eat these foods, these simple sugars, um, they break down very quickly and they spike our blood sugars up really fast. So when you have a donut, you have a croissant, you have cereal, most cereals are really high in glycemic index. It's not going to take a long time for your blood sugar to spike up. Within you know 20, 30 minutes, your blood sugar has shot up to 200. They break down really quickly. They shoot the blood sugars up really high. And this is something that you want to avoid. You want to stick to your low GI score foods. Low GI score foods, generally a score 55 or less is considered low GI. I encourage you to go to Google, type in low GI score foods so you can get an idea of the foods that are included on this list because it'll help you get a better idea of what you should be including in your meals and your snacks and things like that. But generally, this is going to include most of your fruits, a lot of your veggies, minimally processed grains, your nuts, all those different types of products that are normally high in fiber, complex carbohydrates. These foods are not going to spike your blood sugar as high as the simple sugars, the simple carbohydrates. And to get an idea of why that is, to get an idea of why a complex carbohydrate like in our low GI score foods, um, digest so much slower and has such a, a lower impact on our blood sugar. Let's take a look at the actual molecules that are involved. And not to get too deep into chemistry here, but if we take a look, we can see that our simple carbohydrates, like our monosaccharides, our disaccharides, like in sucrose, which is just plain table sugar, um, are only composed of one or two different molecules. So the body breaks those down really quickly. I mean, they're simple uh, sugars like our glucose is one molecule. There's nothing to break down. So that's why it spikes the sugar so fast. And that's why our glucose tablets have dextrose, which is the same thing as glucose because it spikes our blood sugar fast. Compare that to the complex carbohydrates, multiple chains. They're multiple molecules combined together. And the body takes a while to break those apart, break it down. And in that time, the body can respond. It can produce insulin. And it doesn't cause your blood sugar to spike as high because it takes a longer amount of time to break these down. And that's why you need to focus when you're having your meals, focus on your, your low GI score food. So look up those foods, get comfortable with them, get familiar with the foods that are included and try to include those in a lot of your meals. You'll notice that your post-meal spike is going to be much lower than um, when you have those simple carbohydrates, those simple sugars in your food. So try that out and see the effect it has on your blood sugars. 
So those are my top three tips and tricks. Um, they're not just my own. These are things that are really proven that have been studied to decrease your post-meal blood sugar spike. So try them out. If you're not implementing any of these, go ahead and start to slowly make changes in your lifestyle and add some of these different things. Maybe just one at the start and then eventually try out all three and see how your blood sugars are impacted. See how your post-meal blood sugar really starts to come down. You'll really notice a difference. So I hope this was helpful. If it is, please let me know if there's any suggestions you have for future videos. I'd love to hear it. And if there's any questions or anything at all, please leave them in the comments and I'll certainly get back to you. And thank you so much for watching.